Strasvitia. Strasvitia, everyone. Uh, Benazivut, Nick, Ancient. and Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, today we're going to talk about the Russian uh, film from, uh, what, 2004? Yep, 2004, I think it was the, was when it hit Russia, and then we didn't see it in America until like 2006. And by then there was already, I think, a sequel in Russia. So Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I remember, uh, you know, when we had did message boards, uh, you know, we had to film message board, I remember the title of it, but everybody was talking about this awesome movie coming from Russia, eventually look out for it, so. Yep, and I think even the poster says the first in an epic trilogy, which is two films still, 15 years later. Right, right. <laughs> so, so. We're going to watch, we're going to talk Night Watch from 2004 yeah. in Soviet Russia, uh, Night Watch is Us. So join us. <laughs> All right, welcome back to the show. I'm one of your hosts, Kyle Gothi from GoFilmReviews.com. I'm Nick from the St. Paul Filmcast, and thanks again for finding this. Thanks again for watching, and for our loyal viewers, thanks you continue supporting the show. You can follow the show on Twitter and Instagram. Check out the Patreon for some great deals today. We're going to talk about a film. Uh, outside of another foreign film of, uh, of, of kind of a favorite of ours, Nightwatch. Nightwatch, yeah. So, set in a world where supernatural beings exist among normal humans, right. a shaky truce has been formed between the forces of light and dark. A squad of light beings called the Nightwatch help to police the truce, but when a prophecy begins to take shape and the truce is tested, all of Moscow teeters on the edge of destruction. All right, so uh, this is actually uh, based on a book of 1998 in Russian, um, and then I think do you got? Yeah, I have the one where it's du it's not dubbed. I have the one that's in complete Russian. So my version has it, it's in Russian, but like the opening and the the final like narration okay. were, both, were both done in English. There's three different versions of the film, and all three are very very not different. Like in terms of how they actually right. edit it, yeah. it's just like whether or not there's certain parts spoken in English or Russian. I would say it doesn't really take away if you find the one that's English done because they really did a fantastic, fantastic mm. job of doing it. But if you find the authentic one of Russian, it, it, it's a little bit better, mm. a little more flows better. But that's that's because it's in the native language. Yeah, I like yeah. being able to to watch the opening with the English narration purely because the opening is so visual. It reminded me of the opening of Lord of the Rings from 2001, where it's like you get this epic narration. And I this is epic. Did a for really good job, job and yeah. for such a small budgeted movie. I mean, this movie was considered a hit because it was shot with such a low budget. Really, it's, I think I think it's the number one highest grossing film of all time in Russia. Right. Uh, it so it's, it was quite a big hit for a film that didn't actually have a budget and, and really had a, a swing. <laughs> now, if you want to really want to be contested, you want to how many times they cut, how much editing cuts, even like a battle scene. It's like. Then we flash back, then we flash back, we mm. do this, and then this, and this, and this, this, this. So, so it's very, one of those fast cuts, it's very much of the time. You did that a lot in the early 2000s. Yeah. Right. And yeah. I think this was also, uh, you know, there wasn't a ton of film production going on in Russia up until this point. I think since the fall of like, the Soviet Empire, there was like a lot of, there was a lot of movement uh, yeah. towards, you know, creating a film production again, but there wasn't a ton of it coming out at the time. So. You really kind of had this idea, and this film started out, I believe, as a miniseries, was the original intent, was that it was going to play like a four-night miniseries. When right. they saw the dailies, they were like, no, we have to make a movie out of this because it's it's really looking great. So. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get it out there, right? So yeah. even the film didn't start out as a film. So it's like a blender of modern story and old folklore, Russian folklore. Mm -hmm. So you have a lot of like blending of really modern, and you got vampires, you got witches, you got spells, you got all this, so it's a mixture. And it's very convoluted, but I think if you had a simple story, it is kind of a simple story, but I think the convoluted helps it out a little bit. It, it's nice because we're going into it with our main character, Anton, who he's been in this world for 12 years, but he's still relatively new to it. You know, I mean, yeah. you know, th there's a lot going on here, and I think having that mess of what's going on here kind of allows us to be as confused as he is at times. <laughs> yeah. And really, the, yeah, you said it right. The film is very much a simple story. There is a prophecy. There is an accident involving a vampire that could break yeah, the good, truce. Bad, that's it. And there's a bunch of omens. Like the whole film, I mean, when you when you really break it down, even on Wikipedia, they, they just say a bunch of omens happen. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I think that's really what the film is described as in a lot of ways. So the, you can kind of lose yourself a little bit in trying to figure it out, or you can just sit back and enjoy it. So, it, like I said, it was plot heavy, mm -hmm. but it's a simple story. Yeah. So if you want to, you know, if you want to navigate to a little, I mean, the whole thing of her Olga like transforming it from an owl, and that takes that's a huge subplot. It's mm -hmm. a lot of time, but it's not really an overall emphasis of what we're talking about the story. But yeah. it's 
it's interesting to watch. Yeah, uh, graphics are really good. I like the lighting of it because it it's like a horror movie. I don't know if it is a horror movie. I don't know if you put it in a horror movie because even the poster, even that looks like a horror movie. I would liken it to a. I was I was thinking a lot about this question. I was likening yeah. it to a Russian Nightbreed from Clive Barker because that film is a dark fantasy in a lot of ways with horror elements. You know, it, that that film has a serial killer, but yeah. it's also got this like underground you know, mutant homeworld kind of a thing, and Clive yeah. Barker's got his touch. Here we have kind of the same thing. We've got vampires, so it kind of hints at that horror element, but then there's just more, like, fantastical elements. There's the prophecy, which you hear in fantasy a lot. A lot of good stuff. I got a lot of, yeah. like, superhero ideals out of the ideas of these others. Yep. Um, or maybe even, like, Harry Potter, they're living amongst us. <laughs> you know, like, there's a lot of fantasy elements, but he hits it with that horror tinge. And, and what you mentioned with about the, uh, the graphics, they've aged. Like, there's obviously, like, some... A little bit more gumminess to the CG. Right, I, would, that's a good I don't word know for it, if right. it's. I don't know if it's aged poorly in that way, though. You no, know, like, but it's like a timestamp. Yeah, of like this is like what we did in two thousand four. Yeah, and you gotta you gotta give credit for the ambition of you know we don't make a lot of movies, especially of the fantasy realm, but we're gonna just we're just gonna throw everything at the at the screen and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a lot of a mixture of right. I would say there's a lot of horrific things to it. I mean, you mentioned Clyde Barker, and like the guy gets stabbed with scissors in the hand. And that's very Clive Barker, mm -hmm. like, right? Like, like, ah, or the kind of bloody, everything's kind of bloody. Um, but, right, there's some really horrific things, but I'd be tempted not to put it into the horror. I'll put it in, like, a fantasy, sci-fi yeah. fantasy, I don't know. But there's a lot of, like, Lord of the Rings kind of mixture because you have the battle sequence and the costumes and everything look really fantastic. Yep. Um, even the dialogue of, you know, is a little bit clunky, but you can get along with it. Yeah. yeah, it's it's that kind of uh, chewing scenery kind of dialogue where it's you know it's it's meant to sound a little bit goofier, and of course there's that translation part of it too. So maybe what we're reading out of it is not the authentic Russian; it's kind of like Englishized, if you will. Um, so that that's kind of like a, a touchier thing, and you you get that sometimes with those foreign releases. Um, the film is directed by Timur Bekmambetov, who's actually yes. been. Uh, pretty prominent in American cinema for the past 15 years. Instead of doing the third part of this trilogy, he went to Universal to make uh, Wanted, which I was right. a big fan of. And then he also made uh, Abraham Lincoln, a Lincoln kind of Vampire Hunter. Uh, he did Profile recently, which was the first film to use that screen grab technology where the whole film takes place on a computer screen, which oh. kind of like that, you know, right. really changed I, a lot of stuff going on there too. I think that, yeah, did it come out a couple of years ago? Yeah, well, yeah. there's Profile and Searching. I think he produced, Search. which was kind of like a more popular version. Of it. We also got good. host last year during the pandemic, so right. it's kind of become kind of its own thing. He's he's revolutionized lo a lot of things. He's got a style that not everyone's gonna like. I'm a huge fan of Wanted. I thought Wanted was great, but I, apparently I'm in the minority of that. So, <laughs> but it's a very like you do a lot of wide scoping, then you cut fast to really close up in your face, then yep. wide scoping, and then you you know you do close ups of even pushing a doorknob. Like why are we even, <laughs> why are we even close up on that? But okay, we'll do that. But it's that build up of intensity where there are even maybe there won't be so much intensity, but you want to keep that pacing. You mm -hmm. want to keep your heart rate going throughout everything. So, yeah. yeah. I actually saw this film uh, right after seeing Shaun of the Dead for the first time. And I remember thinking, like, he's, he's trying to be Russian Edgar Wright at times. You know, where, like, he's got that, you know, frenetic kind of cuts and pacing to it. And, yeah. and showing you things that maybe you don't need to see, like, in Shaun of the Dead when they show you him peeing in the, the bowl. You know, and then, like, they kind of this, pushing the doorbell. I, I think I was a little bit too critical of him at that point because I hadn't really melded my thoughts on it, but he kind of had that, that Edgar Wright freneticness. But it's that jaggedness that I think the editing, even though we're going to criticize it, or we're going to mention it, but mm -hmm. I think it needs it, because if we don't have that, then it's a little bit slower paced movie, but we want to keep the energy going. In fact, even when they're in that warehouse battling vampires, now we got metal music. Ba -da -da -da. Yeah. Now we got the death metal music. Um, if you didn't know, and there's perfect color for this, because in Russian, red and beautiful are the same word. Mm. So we they use Thank a lot you, of Nick. red, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so in red, you know, we always say it's a red square, but in Russian, it's more like beautiful square. Mm. So, but it's the same word, Russian, which is a lot of they use a lot of red throughout all their movies, and it's a perfect. I like that perfect metal because they have a lot of blood and everything, but it's it's delicately placed around because red is regarded as something beautiful, it's honorable. It's like where are you going to place it? Mm. And they place it everywhere. Like you know, Anton's gloves are red. That's or they're in the gloom where the the boy drops. It's the red lights go down or like that. So the wonderful placing articulate of red is kind of, a, I think, intentional. 
that's funny that you point that out too because the the film at times seems like it's striving to be ugly you know like it's striving right. to show kind of some really some really like less than reputable well you gotta go to the butcher know? shop and you're like I don't think I want to be steak sandwich today right yeah, yeah exactly it's kind of okay just showing it I, that's I kind of called it you know like dirty Lord of the Rings at times because yeah. it, it is like totally fine if you took like the scumminess of Star Wars and Alien and like put it into like a Lord of the Rings kind of setting and and that's something that the, the big difference of course being that this is supposed to be in like our world you know, <laughs> yeah, know. Um, and so that we have our own like you know horrific kind of Lord of the Rings going on behind the scenes so so if you want like there's a balance but then, then you have a but definitely like Anton's entire barometer character I mm-hmm. always call it the barometer character it's his entire focus of him and what he's he frightened of and what his his, his discoveries and oh my god my, my son is now going to be the prophecy oh, yeah. foretold and all that stuff so um, I always use that as a term barometer character but it's kind of weird that the lead character is our barometer character as well yeah and, and part of it is it's odd because we do have that 12 year time jump and, and part of me want, wishes we had had more flashbacks of him figuring this stuff out or even sp- or spend the whole time in 1992, I believe it is, where the film opens because I kind of wanted to figure out, okay, someone needs to show me around because there's a lot happening here. There is a lot. I do yeah. wish that there was a little bit more of that introduction to it because the character is introduced and they're introduced to the world and then we jump 12 years. And I found that opening because, you know, you said it's kind of, th- there's a lot of, there's a lot of, less than reputable events going on. I mean, he's literally going to a to a witch to have her kill the it, unborn child of the woman that he loves. Like, yeah. Wow, okay, that's a starter. <laughs> right, you're gonna, and this is a hero? Okay. Yeah. But yeah, then he wears a red tie. They also do that, make, make Anton younger, Oh. the same way that Christian Bale is, looks younger in Batman Returns. Just mm. put your hair down. And just, yeah, just, <laughs> yeah, that's true. And then, and then it's make, probably the worst hair piece. In the right, movie. just put your hair down and then make your clothes a little more oversized so they look a little bit younger. But then, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it kind of looked like Jim Carrey in Eternal Sunshine when he's like playing himself as a baby. Right. Um. <laughs> they always do that. Just comb your hair so you don't have a forehead. Don't yep. show your forehead. But, right, there's a lot of dark themes to this and it's a very dark film and there's not a lot of light even though you're supposed to battle the good light. But, even the shots of where it's like supposed to be daytime, it's not really bright outside. But you have to do that almost if you're doing a movie in Russia, right? Yeah, you can't, I, it can't be I can't tell if it's day for night shooting or if it was like intentionally shot and then color coded that way. Or muted, or yeah, I the whole brightness. Maybe that's it. just life. I don't know. Right. <laughs> I have no idea Like how, if the intention was what the execution was or if that's just how the film ended up. But yeah, it does kind of have that gloomy, nonstop gloom. Um, that right. we get with that, and maybe it's maybe it's living in the night watch. And I think it's, it's another one of the things of a timestamp that just kind of what we did, mm-hmm. and that's still kind that's of leads over from like the late nineties. Yeah, it's still kind of where we did dark like adventure stuff. Yeah, mid mid two thousands, like everything in the world is is darkness and depressing. You know, we we kind of think of like goth as like the nineties, but goths in cinema seemed like kind of the the O's. <laughs> right, it's very goth, very gothic. It's not American Gothic, but very goth, Slavic Gothic, so, mm. you know, Slavic Gothic, Gothic or Yeah, and it does seem like it maybe took a little bit out of Blade 2's playbook. Maybe. Because, you know, Blade 2, uh, Del Toro's film... Well, it has a sword in it. You know, yeah. and it's got the vampire part of it, but it also... Yeah, it's got the seedy underbelly of society. And so it, that that was something that I noticed almost immediately when watching the film was that too that it's got yeah Blade too like the codes now. of where you can go party and be a vampire and it's yeah always like kind of the high tech with the fantasy I like I like that kind of melding since it's not something we get very often and again because everyone kind of compares it to like these fantasy epics we don't talk about the fact that it's it's got that kind of technological fantasy to it as well yeah cool. and you got a great showdown on an urban city but with a spine sword and stuff. It's yeah, that spine sword's pretty cool. I don't really know how it plays into the video game thing that he's, he's the guy's playing the whole movie where he keeps cutting back to this video game he's playing. That's like, video games and movies, man, like, they always look the absolute worst. This is like the most low res, it looks like PlayStation 1. It does. Um, but for some reason they thought people were still playing that and I, I don't understand how that plays into it because the entire movie the guy's playing the game where the guy pulls out the spine sword and it's like, Maybe it's like, but I don't know. like doing like Mortal Kombat, you know, when he had to take the spine out of people. Yeah, you know? maybe he can do anything he wants, but and he sees that, and he's like, "I'm gonna do that later." But it's on. so weird. <laughs> it's something that you never forget. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, right. Uh, and he doesn't uh, fall over afterwards. <laughs> I remember the, the a lot of the snippets that we got from message boards and people talking about this movie. Like, wait till it comes out. Like, he had like the upside down head. 
monster. Oh, yeah. And I, I remember that was the first thing I ever got. Like, what is this movie going to be about? It's like very much, and I'm glad you brought it up. Like, Car- Clyde Parker, like, it was going to mm. be a Clyde Parker horror movie. And there's more action to it than I initially thought it would be. I thought we we're going to get into some deep you know, Hellraiser kind of material, but it's not. It's not. It's a, like, it's a very folklore story. Yeah, it do, Yeah, I thought it was going to get more Hellraiser-y too, and you're right. I think folk is kind of the, like the right term for it because it's dark, it's fantasy, but it does kind of have this, Child. I don't want to say like, of, you know, it's got comedy, comedy, but yeah, like it's got kind of this element of a society with, you know, within. And so seeing that you can, you find it more believable, I think, when you watch it, at least I did. Um, you find a belief that this could exist somewhere, and just like with Nightbreed, it could be behind the veil of society. And you have a little bit of comedy, like him in the, in the, the night train, the cart train with the flashlight. And oh, yeah. are you crazy? You know, yeah. Ah! Or them, you know, he's play, mimicking the owl before the owl turns into the human Olga. But yeah, the, the play. So the, it's a lot of dance, a little awkward of comedy. Like, do you have women's clothes? Are you kidding me? Right? Yeah. 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 His there's, neighbor. There's kind of a, a kookiness to the whole thing. Where well, it's, it's a little bit pepper know, kookiness, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's. And I'm not sure if I found any of it actually like laugh out loud funny, but it's just kind of this it's, in, it's endearing in a yeah. way because it's the kind of jokes that you would make when you're at your by yourself at home, um, you know, because you know it's not going to actually register a laugh, but like you find it funny. So. But like we talked about in other movies before, like the Possessor stuff, where we have very dark themes to it. There's mm. really no comedic point in the elevated, but here you have a little bit of more like let's take a break from all the gloom and have a little bit poke a little funny. And I think that part of that comes with the the performance level too, where like everyone's everyone's yelling a lot in the movie. Oh yeah, but the yelling is kind of oh, yeah. it's again kookiness. Kind it's of that like harsh it's that, dialogue. Yeah, they're they're yelling, but they're yelling about some of the strangest things. And if you just <laughs> took a snippet of dialogue from the film, having not seen it, you'd be like, "What is going on?" You know, it, it's kind of I builds know, up that it, intensity, like emergency, like we're you know everything is important, and then, you know right. Yeah. Blaring, like even when they're chasing the car and then it gets flipped and everything and then oh yeah that's part of the, yeah okay yeah, it's okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it's if you got to be careful because when you google this there's a lot of other night watch films there's one even from the 30s so it takes that's a little true. It, it's a popular title but i think if you're going to talk about russian films you know and then i don't know why the oscars didn't that Accepted submission. Yeah, so this was Russia's uh, for international film. This was their submission, which was not. I, I I don't don't know if I would say that it would win best international film, no. but it's certainly like it feels like. Again, I haven't seen. I don't think any of the actual nominees, but I feel like it was pretty darn good to be be associated with that and to celebrate kind of a, a resurgence of new cinema from there. So, I I would have I would have put it on my list. <laughs> right. I didn't think it's just too much too much actiony, too much dark, too much you know. For the Academy, when it's get that snotty, you know. Yeah, I think we hadn't, we hadn't kind of as as a society within the Academy hadn't developed to the point where we were giving Get Out nominations and like those kinds of things too. I mean, we still didn't. A little too more horrific for them to. Yeah, yeah. and because this film is sold as a horror movie, I mean that's that's how I was sold on it. If you look at the the poster, I mean it's it looks like a zombie on the front of the the screen. There's evil birds flying Mm -hmm. everywhere. Like it feels more in line with like the Resident Evil movies, just based on its like the way it looks on the poster. So I could see a lot of people within the Academy being like, "Eh, no, I don't think so," and then just moving on to something else. So right. I th- I'm glad you brought up the the birds. They're, they're almost like the birds, ex, you know, not really ex machina. They're more like McGruffin. All of a sudden, the birds are here. Bad yeah. trouble. Here, the birds yeah. are coming. Right. I know. Like if you were driving by and you just saw that one building with all the birds circling at the end, you're like, maybe we'll stop for dinner somewhere else. But it has that Peter Jackson long, you know, and the battle on the bridge, and then they pull away, way, keep yep. going, keep going. That pull away that Peter Jackson used for all the Lord of the Rings stuff where you show the epic battle. See, and that's where I think, like, yeah, the CG is kind of endearingly like. Aged, where like I, I found it likable, even though it looks kind of bad right now. When it's like the the heavy zoom, the heavy pull out, they do that that uh, movement on the train as well twice, I believe, where they zoom in on him in the last car. And yes. when that happens, I was right. like, yes. I was like, okay, it looked silly. I really dug it though too. <laughs> but I have to say, you have to get in the right mood and setting to watch this movie. It's not one of those like you just pop it in, and you have to like. Get invested and understand what you're getting into to really appreciate. It. Because if you go in blindly, like, oh, I'm just going to watch this movie and see what it is, I think it's going to get annoyed at how fast cuts and the convoluted story. You just kind of have to know what you're getting into before you. And, and
and that's why part of me kind of thinks it might have worked better spaced out across a miniseries. And the reason why I say that is not because I, I feel like the film should be longer, but I do feel like that the the film should have some, has it has several places where you feel like a narrative stop in the action where it feels like they would have taken a break for an episode. Yeah, and then come back. Talk about and, Olga. Why you she know? got punished? Yeah. Uh, and in fact, I believe because there, uh, I believe there's a trilogy of books, and I think the films Nightwatch's sequel Daywatch actually takes part of the, like what was not used for the first book still. So it seems like at the end of the sequel to this film, we still hadn't even gotten fully out of the first book. So there was still a lot more material that could have been delved into. Magic That's why I'm kind of wondering, yeah. Magic shock, yeah. Well, From yeah, Daywatch. Yeah, Magic we definitely, yeah. Magic shock. So, uh, it's a high recommendation for me, but just get ready for it to get again, too. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a high recommendation for me as well. I think it's the kind of movie that, that there are good po- moments to pause at home and take a bathroom break or pause and get your pizza. It definitely can pause it and like come back um, It feels then. like one of those movies that you can you can spend a night watching. I do think the film is a little roughly paced, but overall it's an enjoyable, fun, chaotic mess of enjoy- of like entertainment, I guess. Yeah. So we both dig it. <laughs> I still dig it. I haven't seen it in like, for like ten years and I got to watch it again and it's still kind of Yeah, old. my copy was still wrapped up at home. Uh, <laughs> because I, I had borrowed a copy from a friend right after uh, right after day watch came out and I did a double feature of the two and that was the last time I watched it so it's been a good 15 years for me so it was a fun revisit yeah mm-hmm. makes me want to visit the Moscow on a Hill the restaurant in St. Paul oh, you restaurant, so. <laughs> have you seen it yeah let us know your thoughts on day watch have you seen the film have you seen its sequel which one do you prefer have you seen the uh, really interesting redub that was made I think it was called like night party or something like that it was a very famous redub of this night movie. chat yeah night. maybe that was it yeah have you seen that version of it did you like that more um, let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below, um, or even if any other Timur Bekmambetov films uh, that he did from his his time in America. Uh, was there, is there anything on there you want us to cover next? Do you want us to do the remake to Ben-Hur? Um, <laughs> let us know in the comments. And while you're down there, as Nick mentioned earlier, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out that Patreon down below. And as we said before, any person who joins the Patreon before the end of the year is going to get a Patreon-selected video. It doesn't matter which tier you join. Down in the low is a dollar. You can get one Patreon video just for joining before the month of December comes to an end. And we're coming to an end on our season three, just winding down here as well. We got a couple more episodes to go, so yep. join us for those. And once again, everybody, you can find all my film reviews at gofilmreviews.com. I'm Nick from the St. Paul Filmcast, and das Vidania.